using Cozy Wool Yarn by Loops and Thread. You will need five of these all together. The color I'm using is Clematis and here is the lot number and everything. Now, what I suggest is getting a tube. This is actually a paper straw wrapped in box tape with a pencil grip on it. Uh, it's called a tensioner or a yarn guide. I have a reusable plastic straw. That'll work. You can use a pen tube. Just anything to put the yarn through that you hold on so the yarn isn't rubbing. See how it would be rubbing? Rubbing against your hand as you're using it. All right, let's start with our cast on. Now we will be using the larger topper. This is the 60 peg topper. And as you can see, let me zoom in here a bit. We got an arrow here and an arrow here. That is where we're going to start. So I'm gonna make a little slip knot put on the peg before. The stitch that we are doing today Actually, it is a modified version of the figure eight stitch. Whereas with your figure eight, you are wrapping in a figure eight matter one peg at a time. This one, all we are doing is we are wrapping two at a time. See? So we do this all the way to the other side. the other side there is enough pegs where I can wrap these two and these two but just to keep from accidentally joining this and working in the round I stop here because after a couple rows we'll take this knot out and it can just hang and you'll use that at the end of the project so you want to push down every peg what your loom should look like. Now you need to take a piece of scrap yarn. I wanna say this is about 40 inches long. You wanna go with a contrasting collar and this is just to help with your cast on edge. So this will stay here until the project is finished. But what we do is you put the string over top the stitches that are already here. You know, I don't want to get it tangled up in my yarn, so that I gotta move. Now, what I do, this is our beginnings. You want to pull both of those strands down, and see, you'll have three strands hanging down now. These two, to help keep it from getting pulled out. I am just tying a little knot. There we go. At this point, we are going to work back to our first peg. We are wrapping every row the exact same. The working yarn is coming from this peg, so we will go straight across. We're not re-wrapping this. And we will wrap those two. Then you're going to skip over and wrap those. And go up, wrap those two. Skip over. Back at the beginning. Okay, so other than the very last one on the opposite side, every peg that has a stitch on it will now have two. What you will be doing is taking those bottom loops over the top that is called knitting off. Now, I like to start on the side where my string is so I don't have to worry about 
whether it's not whether or not it's gonna pop off or come loose on me. The cast on is complete. From here, you are still doing that same wrapping motion, but now that the cast on is complete, we can go ahead and take that little anchor stitch out. Just pull that down, and you don't have to tie it off or anything. You can just leave it hanging down, it'll be perfectly fine. Now we see where our working yarn is coming from. We see that it's coming from these two. So we go straight down and then we start wrapping again. Every row is going to be the same as the initial wrap that you did for your cast one. And you'll notice that once you have a few rows, you will be able to easily see the direction everything is wrapped. Okay, we are at our cast off point. Look how stretchy and big it is. Yay! So, at this point, I love this tool, but I'm actually going to use the single one. We're going to take all the stitches you can go from the all stitches on the outside, put them on the inside, or the inside, put them on the outside. Um, just because it's easier to show. I'm going to go outside. Now these ones will probably be a little tighter since the gauge is a little smaller on the inside. We are going to do a basic bind off, even with the double stitches. Well, with the two stitches covering one peg. So I'm going to hold both of these down. Now both of these will go over top. The second one. We'll go on the first and you knit it off. Now this one, you just fill in that empty hole there. Now, for the next one, again, you e-wrap two. This time it's in the middle. So you gotta be a little more careful. Take that over. Oops. And with this one, you only want to take one side off. Then we move. Move the second stitch to the first. Cast off. And move it.
Okay, we're down to our last couple. Still just gonna work it the same. But now we have this. So I'm just going to move that over. There we go. Oh, I need a better scissors. Here we go. Take, pull it through. So I grabbed the first two stitches I saw. You wanna twist and pull that second one through the first. Now here's the next one we see. If you want it to be a little more stretchy, you can pick up. See how I picked that one up in the middle? You can do that too. But for this project, I'm just going to be picking up the ones on top. Your string happens to pull out. I'll show you right here at the end. I'm just grabbing these loops right here. So what we do is we just actually take that crochet hook, pull that through and tighten it. Let me zoom this out a bit so you can kind of see it better. See how nice that edge looks? Now, we've got this string all mangled in it. You can actually take this string and it should easily pull completely out. There we go. Time to add the fringe, which the fringe, same yarn, and you're actually going to need 60 strips of yarn that are somewhere between 10 to 12 inches long. Or get yourself a piece of cardboard five, six inches wide and use that instead. And what you want to do is you want to take which I like to take and just cut a little slit in the cardboard just to put my string in so it doesn't go. So this one, two, If you want to put more fringe on it, you absolutely can. But see, you want to cut it. See, both my ends are right here. And now you're going to take your scissors and cut the yarn here. Make sure it's the same place where it's already cut on that end. We will start with our cast off. So, where's my crochet hook? You want a crochet hook for this, it makes it a lot easier. You just kind of line yours. The ends aren't exact, don't worry about it. You go back and trim later. But see where my cast off is? I've got like a, kind of like a loop. Put the crochet hook through. Grab both, pull them through, see? So we got part of it on one side, part of it on the other side. And then you just take the tails, which I'm actually taking this right here was that cast on tail that I tied off at the end. I'm actually moving that in with it. That will help to secure it as well. See, I didn't do that on the other one and it sticks out on the side. 
So you're going to do this down until there are 15. And I don't do every single one. It's about every other one. So about here should be another. Let's put my hook through. See? Now when I pull it through, I make sure I even the ends up as much as I can here. Let me zoom this in so you can see it better. When I pull it through, I do even those up as much as I can. But just the yarn's so thick, I don't know if I can just crochet it through like that. Oh, I did. You want to make sure you're pulling it through the same way and that your knots are the same way. And you can individually grab the strands if you feel that it's a little too loose and you want to tighten it up a little more. I'll show you one more and you do this to both sides. So I've got my crochet hook pulling it through. Make sure I got these as even as I can. Now pull the ends through. Oops. There we go. Let's see? Go all the way across both sides. You should have 15 if you do and you want to fill them in more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, that is all I have for this. Let's zoom out and I'll show you the finished end on both sides with all the fringe on it. See, you got like a couple inches. You see, not all of mine are exact. That one's a little farther away. But it's not anything people are going to notice. I just didn't count on that side like I did on this one. This one, they're a lot more symmetrical. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was actually a really fun project for me to make. Uh, I am, as you guys know, I am a huge fan of the rotating loom. And this was a nice project. I could just carry it around the house. I was able to shove the yarn down on the inside to avoid from making big messes. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this as well. Uh, 